Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Brock Peters, Mitch Vogel, Dabney Coleman, Special guest star, Robert Walden. Tonight's episode, Jacob's Boy. Start playing that oompa oompa music, fellas, because I am about to grab me the brightest ring. <laughs> Five hundred. That monkey ain't gonna pay you nothing. He'll break your head for you. He ain't gonna pay you nothing. Oh, he will. Or he gets whistleblowed back to that Tuscaloosa prison farm. Yeah, but what if he does you like you said he done that guard, huh? But he don't want no trouble. I knew that the other day when I run into him. Now all I want is that brass ring just this one time. Stick around and I'll buy you a beer in a few minutes. Matter of fact, I'll buy you two beers each. <laughs> Aaron, how are you? Yeah, we'll go outside and eat dog. Tell you true, twice 25 years wouldn't be long enough to forget the looks of that screw's head after you bashed him. <laughs> I know, I remember. Look, he deserved to die. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you was just trying to help that kid he was hassling. I mean, you had to run. Yes. Uh, the pity was, he has a little time left to serve. Yeah. You got my word, right? It's just this one time. If it wasn't for my wife needing all that medicine, I, I gotta say, coming on you when I did after all these years, <laughs> it was providence, pure and simple. Yes, providence. I never want to see you again, Hobie. Trouble at all, was it, Hobie? Well, it's just like I told you. <laughs> How about them mirrors now? Come on, now, let me look at it. Let me see it. <laughs> hey, that brass ring's only gonna make your finger green anyway. Come on, anyway, give me back now. Come oh, on, come oh, on, you got it. Hobie, that's all right. Is that really $500, Frenchie? I don't know. Let me count it. Don't worry, Hobie. We'll split it with you. We'll get more than a couple of beers out of this one, won't we? Hey, Hobie, come on. Don't feel bad. Come on, Hobie. We, we, we. Hobie, come on. Wake up. Hobie. Hobie. I think he's dead. Hobie. Hobie. Come on, Hobie, get up. Police! Over here, my friend, I think he's. He's. Get an ambulance, I think he's dead. I don't know. They put alarms on clocks anymore? If you remember, I did not finish typing that report till after 1 a.m. I remember, and I didn't finish reading it until 2 a.m. 
My alarm clock went off at 6.30, just like always. You know what I'd do if I were you? Yeah, what's that? I'd take that clock and stick it in your closet. Very funny. Easy, easy on the sugar. It's not for you. It's for him. Come on. Here you go, heavy on the sugar. Oh, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Right. This is Mr. Franklin, Hubert Franklin. Oh, no, Gimp, call me Gimp, please. This is Inspector Kelly. Pleasure to meet you, Inspector. Gimp? A friend of his was killed last night. Oh, I hope, hope he wasn't uh, a real friend, you know, not a friend friend. He was sort of an acquaintance friend, you know what I mean? What was Hobie's last name? Hobie, just Hobie. He was a new guy in town, down south. Uh, tall, skinny, weird-looking guy. We're running a make on his fingerprints. Did you already get this? I haven't started yet. I got in a little late this morning. We were sitting in his bar on Farrell, having a little taste, you know? Hobie's waiting for a meet with some guy he knows from way back. Just bumped into a few days ago. Then this guy comes in, and it's this black guy. Big, mean-looking son of a gun, you know? So uh, they leave together. So I followed him. I mean, I don't know, it was the way Hobie was uh, acting nervous-like, sort of, you know? So I go into this alley, and they're talking nice and easy, and all of a sudden, this black guy hauls off, cold cocks Hobie, he goes down, and he don't move. I look up, the black guy does it disappear. Oh, I'm standing here in the alley by myself, screaming for the cops. So I'm yelling my head off. Suddenly, a cop car comes up. Two guys come up to me, and uh, hope he's dead. Here I am. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, here's a copy of the description he gave the officers. Any idea from the other people in the bar? No, nothing. Uh, you said they ran into one another a few days ago? Yeah, that's right. In this uh, dry cleaning place, uh, Hobie used to work in off on Sutton Street. Uh, I can't remember their name. So you're not planning on leaving town in the next few days, are you, Mr. Franklin? Yeah, please. No, I got no way to go. No way to get there. Well, we can contact you at this address. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if I can afford the flop, I will be there. Well, if you happen to move, let us know. We would like you to make the identification. Oh, sure thing. Sure thing, Lieutenant. Listen, any help I can be, anything I can do. Thanks a lot. You're a big time. help. See you around, Gil. Okay. Okay. That's all. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Listen, uh, look through the yellow pages, will you, Steve? Dry cleaners on Sutton Street. Okay. Got in a little late this morning, huh? Thought the alarm went off at 6.30. It did, but it was in the closet. You gave up too soon. That's what happened. <laughs> Down by two in the night with Mike Marshall working against him. Man, how'd they do it? <laughs> Bobby Bond delivers with a two-out double, and the Giants beat the Dodgers. We'll be back in a minute with a post-game wrap-up, so don't go away. Yeah, Bobby Bonds did it, huh? Man, he's the greatest, isn't he? Better than Bad Henry? Well, nobody's better than him. Oh, what about the babe? He did what he did a lot sooner. Well, so I heard. But could he do it against today's pitchers? Oh, that's like the argument about Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. And we're never going to know, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a cop-out if I ever heard one. Oh. <laughs> Let me see. Well, what do you think? Not bad. Looks pretty good. Hey, Jacob. Feel like catching that doubleheader tomorrow? You know, your dad's coming in on the 1220 flight tomorrow. Well, the second game won't start till after 5 sometime. Don't you think it would be nice if we had dinner with him? If you say, Jacob. <laughs> Certainly I know him. He was a floater, worth nothing. Hobie Shuttleworth, nothing. But Uncle Sam says $2 an hour. So $2 an hour he gets. And what do I get? Nothing. 
From a floater, you get nothing. I'm sorry he's dead. Mr. Horwitz, we understand he met the man who might have killed him here. Maybe somebody who worked for you? Uh, maybe killer works for me? Black guy, about 40? No. Driver, maybe? Oh, around six feet tall, 180, 90 pounds? Nobody who makes deliveries here fits that description. What about a customer? Oh. Them I got in all sizes. The size you want. Let me see. Of course. There's a guy who's been coming here for years. A big guy, like you said. What's his name? Willits. Jacob Willits. He's been a customer here for over 10 years. He's a maybe killer, huh? You never know. What about an address? Of course. Here we are. Jacob Willis, 1335 Dendy Street. You just never know, do you? Mr. Todd. Hello, Jacob. How are you? Oh, fine. You're a day early. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, staff had everything lined up so well, by the time I got there, all I had to do was sign the contracts. Then it went through. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you, if things keep going this well, we're going to have to start another subsidiary company. How's chances for getting a big executive for a day? Well, what you have in mind? Well, there's a double header at Candlestick tomorrow. I thought maybe you and Peter and me. Ah, uh, that sounds great, but I, uh, I've got that Lisbon trip next Thursday, and I've got a lot of meetings before that. I... Yeah, you missed the fishing trip with us. Summer vacation will be over before you're back. What is a summer vacation? Just goes. Hey, Jacob, did you see this new camping catalog? It's got some great stuff. Hey, Peter, how are you? You look good. Well, hi, Father. Welcome home, sir. Thank you. How was your trip? Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was very successful. Now, you ought to come along with me sometime, Peter. See how the old man operates. Well, I'm glad it was so successful, Father. Jacob? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Well, I understand you two are planning a camping trip. Well, we, we talked about uh, getting off for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wish I had the time. We could, uh, could go back to Africa, the three of us. Your mother used to love it in Africa. <laughs> I remember... That was a long time ago. I understand it's all different now anyway, but uh, we really should plan something, you know, sometime when I could join you. Mr. Willis gets no mail at all. He very seldom comes here. Well, why is that, Mrs. Anderson? He lives where he works. Where is that? I don't know. Wait a minute. He's lived here for 15 years. You don't know where he works? My husband and I just bought this building last May. Yeah, quite a library. Shakespeare, Emerson, Thoreau. He's got some good jazz sides, too. And also classic. Kind of strange, a man keeping a place here when he lives where he works. Nothing strange about wanting a place of your own, Inspector. My husband and I rented two rooms for nearly 20 years when we were working as domestics. Is this Mr. Willis here? Yes, it is. And the boy, who's the boy? I don't know. New plates, has to be a recent picture. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your help. I hope it's nothing serious you're looking for him for. You know, I hope so, too. Thank you. Peter, how would you, uh, how'd you like to go to Lisbon with me next week? Lisbon? Mm-hmm. Surprise? Uh, yes, sir. Not too pleasantly, though, huh? Uh, 
Peter and I had been talking about spending the last part of the summer up at my cabin near Santa Rosa. But if you two got to go away together, I think that... I'll get it. Well, how about that? Now, I thought that might be uh, rather exciting to him. And it is. But you know how he feels about the country, sir. And I guess, well, well, we planned to spend part of our... Come on, Jacob. Look, I offered the kid Europe, and he'd rather spend the time at your cabin in the Redwoods, where he's already been, what, two, two dozen times? You know, how blasé can you get? No, no, no. It's not that he's blasé. I, I know what it is. He'd rather spend the time with you. That's obvious. Well, yeah, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's just forget about it. It's that obvious, and it should be also understandable. Maybe. Jacob, there are two policemen out there that want to talk to you. Police? Yes, sir. Thank you, Peter. Oh, wait a minute, Jacob. Do you want me to come out there with you? Maybe you'd better. Jacob Willis, gentlemen. You want to see me? Yes, I'm Lieutenant Stone. This is Inspector Keller. My employer, Mr. Todd. How are you? How do you do? Do you mind if I, uh, if I ask what this is all about? Homicide, a friend of Mr. Willis's. You do know a man named uh, Shuttleworth, don't you? O.B. Shuttleworth? He's dead? Mm hmm He was killed last night behind a bar on Farrell Street. Were you at that bar? Mr. Willis, I asked you a question. Your being here to ask these questions seems to say you have some evidence, Lieutenant. You wish to remain silent? I think so. Steve. Uh, just, just a minute now. Lieutenant, I've, I've known this man personally for over 15 years. Now, you come into my house. And... Mr. Todd. Now, just wait a minute. On what charge are you arresting him? Suspicion of murder. It's intriguing, isn't it, Inspector? The distance between us is just a few feet. And yet our lives are miles apart. There must be a great deal of security where you stand. Towel over there, you want to wipe your hands. Lieutenant, I've, I've met with no little success in the business world. And judging people has been a prime factor in that success. I am very aware of who you are, Mr. Todd. Well, my point is that Jacob Willis is more than just an, an old and trusted employee. You know, it's, it's not true that any man given opportunities in life can make something of himself. It, it takes a special kind of man. Jacob Willis is that kind of man. Mr. Todd, excuse me. Homicide, Lieutenant Stone. Yeah, okay. Sokolovich. Come here. Your attorneys are downstairs. You know, I think that Mr. Willis would be very comforted if you were with him right now. Thank you very much. Take Mr. Todd downstairs. Say, uh, anything from I.D. on Shuttleworth? No, not yet. How about Mr. Franklin? You mean Gimp? <laughs> yes, Gimp. I think it would be a good idea if we bought him another cup of coffee first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs>
Wait, you in there? It's me, Gimp. Come on, open up. Frenchie, it's the Gimper. Frenchie. He would have stayed in that hole. <laughs> As Mr. Horowitz says, they're all floaters. Well, Hobie Shuttleworth sure float around enough of those southern prisons. ID says they got enough to write a book. Yeah, thin nothing southern boy. Makes you begin to wonder about the rest Gimp told us. Says he was just an acquaintance. Just acquaintances. I want to see him and Willis face to face. No telling what we'll learn. All you got to say to me is hello, Gimp. That's all. Where's my money, Frenchie? Ah, I blew that man Diggy's place. <laughs> Come on, Frenchie, where's my money? You had a crap game going the last couple of days. Hey, don't fool around. You trying to tell me you blew the money in a crap game? Well, I could run it up as easy as I blew it. Frenchie, half that money was mine. <laughs> Go talk to Mandigi and... Wait, a half was mine, Frenchie. I never had such a hunk in my whole life. So what's changed? Half... They ain't got it now. Frenchie, half that money was mine! Look, don't make me mad. I covered for you. No you run off and I covered for you. You, you <laughs> stole that was my money! My money you took! Are they holding each other up? No, 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 that's, that's the latest chance. The winos try. Let's help him out. Yeah. All right. All right, come on, hold it, you guys. That's the first thing I've heard. Come on, police, break it up. Let's go. Hold it. Hold it. Get that fink. He took my money. He took my money. What money? Uh, he took the money we got from the black guy. He killed Toby. Get him? <laughs> Still a couple of questions Willis has got to ask, like what was that meeting he had with Shuttleworth in the alley really about, and why is he paying bread to some guy like Gimp? Well, as Mr. Todd's lawyer so aptly pointed out, maybe Willis just loaned Shuttleworth that no, money. No, there's more to it than that. Well, I have a hunch you're right. But you're not doing anything about it. Because I've got another hunch. What? I think Willis is an all right guy. Then why is he paying blackmail money? We don't know that. Oh, Mike. Well, we don't. Have you heard from the hospital about the guy you collared? He's still unconscious. Well, I want to see him the minute he comes around. Well, let us know. Now, tell me something. Do you really think that Willis is forking over hush money? What, me question a Mike Stone hunch? Now, how can you argue against that kind of scientific criminological technology? There you go again with that scientific criminological technology college stuff. Now, look, I still stick to my hunches, so get on the phone and find out how that guy's doing in the hospital. Scientific criminologic technology. We 
you'd have said goodbye before you left, wouldn't you? <sighs> you know I would. That's serious, huh? Yeah, it's serious. Well, what is it? Police took my fingerprints. Those prints are going to tell them that 25 years ago, I killed a prison guard in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You killed a guard? Yeah, well, my name was Barnes then. The name I was born with. The name I left along with everything else that ever meant anything to me. W why were you in prison? I was serving time on a work farm for petty theft. I stole a sack of potatoes. Well, if you killed that guard, he must have deserved it. No man's life deserves taking by another man. I know. I know a lot of other things I learned from you, Jacob. Like running away from a problem doesn't ever solve it. I guess that's not always true, is it? Yes, it is true. But maybe there's some problems that, that can't ever be solved. I, I don't know. Hey, Jacob, let me go with you. No. But, Jacob... Give your father a chance, Peter. When your mother died, he abdicated his responsibility. He buried her memory in his work. Now, I know he's long since regretted it. Tell him... Tell him I'll contact him to try to explain. your hunch? What hunch? What hunch? The Willis case. There isn't any Jacob Willis case. There is now, and the name's not Willis, it's Barnes. 25-year-old one from Alabama. 25-year-old one? Prison break, 1949, work farm at Tuscaloosa. Prison break from the work? Oh, wait a minute. While he was serving time for petty theft? <sighs> I know. I know. I'm asking for more details. There should be a follow-up. Is there anything between 49 and now? Nothing, no. Nothing, huh? That makes him a real desperate criminal, I suppose. No, I still stick to my hunch. Tuscaloosa was the same work farm that Hobie Shuttleworth was serving time in 1949, meaning that the meeting they probably had in the alley was over blackmail. Now, Mike, it ends up. Yeah. I put on an APB. It adds up, all right, to a raw deal for Jacob Willis. Or Barnes, or whatever his name is. Now, you'll play hell extraditing him back to Alabama, and I'll see to that. Mr. Todd, it's up to Sacramento, not us. Oh, this is ridiculous to do what you're doing to a man. I agree with you, but it's the law. Lieutenant, I think we both realize the fallibility of what we call the law. Excuse me, sir. Where is he? I don't know, sir. Well, I'll send Peter in, will you please? He isn't here either, sir. <laughs> I thought you might. I hoped you wouldn't. How'd you know I'd come this way? Well, where else but to your place? Did you tell your father that I would call him like I asked you? Uh, no, I didn't see him. And what do you suppose he'll do when he realizes we're both gone? 
He knows we go off every now and then. And when the police come to the house looking for me? I'm sorry, I didn't think. And with the police looking for us, how difficult do you think it'll be to recognize the two of us together? <laughs> I guess you think what I did's pretty stupid, huh? Come on. Where are we going? Get you something to eat. Well, Jacob, I'm not hungry. Oh, it's a long ride back to the city. The city? Jacob, I'm not going yes, back to the are. city. Mm -hmm. Hamburger oil, uh, no onions, fries, and the thick vanilla mortar. You know, two days ago, everything was forever. Now there's nothing. There is your whole life. <sighs> oh, Jacob. Why did this have to happen? Because 25 years ago, I did something stupid. You were hungry. One reason or another, regardless of the reason, you pay for your wrongdoing. No, they don't know. state by now. Yeah. What about that Alabama one? Any follow-up? Not a thing. You want to add kidnapping? Oh, not if the boy went willingly. Oh, man. I'm the side inspector killer. What room? Okay, thanks. Guy at the hospital came around. Let's go. We didn't mean for it to happen that way. I don't suppose it makes much difference anyway. Nobody's gonna miss that Ranchio cracker any more than they're gonna miss me. So Hobie ripped them off for 500 bucks, then you and Gib ripped off Hobie. Well, like I told you, we didn't mean for him to die. Always after the money. Blackmail money. Yeah. Keep Hobie quiet. Yeah. Dumb Hobie. He should've hit him for more than $500. You know, a guy kills somebody. He knows what he's facing. You pay anything to keep it quiet. Wait a minute, are you saying that Willis killed somebody too? No, he just he just thought he did. Who? The guard. The guard he jumped when he broke out of Alabama State Prison. He thought he killed the guard because Hobie told him? Yeah. See, he bumps into this guy and found out he didn't know whether he killed the guard or not. So So he said the guard was dead? Yeah. I'm hoping. Could have got him for a real bundle if you pressed him. Well, I know. I'd have paid anything to get out of this. You know, anything. Will I see you? There's always that chance. Where will you go? Well, I'll stay at my place for a few days. It's not fair. There are no guarantees, Peter. You do your best with what you got. It's not fair. No. But it is what is best for all concerned. Son.
their call in. We're gonna need help. It's pretty wooded down there. I think I hit him. Homicide, Lieutenant Stone. When? Is he all right? I will be right there. No, 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 you did the right thing. Follow up from Tuscaloosa. Guard was assaulted in the escape. Did he die? No, no, retired, living in Mobile. Well, Willis thinks he killed him. That's why he ran. Sounds like it, yeah. Mm. I'll give this information to APB. And if anybody spots him, I don't want Willis to panic. Take care of it myself. No, just a minute. Why don't you give it to Jensen? I just got through talking to George Todd on the phone. His boy came home a half hour ago. I'm going to talk to him. Okay. Hurry up. Get your coat. OK. Hold on. Mike? Yes? On that APB you put out, they think they spotted your man up near Santa Rosa. A man fit in his description was shot when he ran from two officers. They found traces of blood. No. No, I, I won't tell you where he is. Peter, the message we got was from the Santa Rosa Sheriff's Department. They believed that the man they shot was Willis. Shot? Is he all right? He got away, but he could be hurt badly. Now, you know where he is? You said he was near Santa Rosa? Yes. Peter. No, no, I won't tell you anything. Will you tell me if I'm right about something? Not if it's about Jacob. He told you that he broke out of a prison farm, didn't he? Yes, he told me that. And he told you that he killed a prison guard. What is this? Jacob killed someone? It doesn't change a thing. Yes, he told me that. Well, he was wrong about that. He didn't kill anybody, Peter. That's right. <sighs> Look, you're lying to me because you want me to tell you where Jacob is. No, no well, Peter. No, that, that's all right. I'm not lying, and I can prove it to you. Peter, Peter, look at me. We have one problem now. Just one, that's all. If Willis was shot by those sheriff deputies, he may never live to know that he's an innocent man. Look, you're doing your job now, I know that, but I'm not gonna tell you where he is. May I be excused, please? Peter. Just, um, just give me a minute, will you, please? Yeah. Okay. Peter? between Jacob and you. Whatever it is that makes you protect him the way you are. That could have been between you and me. I guess I didn't know how much of you I lost until just a moment ago. There's no way for me to tell you how much I regret that. No way for me to explain how things come out the way they do. Why? Yeah, well, Jacob told me about Mother. 
what her dying did to you. I'm glad he did. I never could. He told me that, too. And Jacob is, uh, quite a man. I don't, I don't care what his past is. He's, he's worked very hard to overcome it. He's worked for me since, well, before you were born. I entrusted him with one link I had between myself and the only woman I ever loved. Trusted him with my son. enough blood to be absolutely sure. We swung west about three miles now, but uh, there's no sign of him anymore. Yeah, well, you just stay on it. We got some more boys coming over from Lakeport. Remember now, this is for surveillance only. If you do spot him this time, just sit on him. Don't move in and don't press him. Sure thing, Sheriff. Denver's, you out there? Yes, sir. Uh, make sure you cover that old logging road east of Benson Forks. Yes, sir. And all of you, keep in radio contact at all times. I ain't gonna lose none of you to any escaped convict. <laughs> Lieutenant Stone, San Francisco Police Department. Ain't found your man yet. I know. Uh, we know where he is. Oh, well, you lead the way, and I'll have my boys meet us. No, like I said before, we made a mistake, so please call your boys off before we make another one. Closer. Jacob! Why'd you do this to me, Peter? Jacob, put the gun down and listen. There's no more time or need to talk. I won't go back. I remember that place even after 25 years. I won't go back. Jacob, no! Jacob, don't! The odds are you may never have to. You didn't kill a guard. We know that. I won't go back. But it's true, Jacob. You didn't kill that guard. 
It's a trick. Jacob! Jacob. You raised a mighty fine boy. A boy that you can be rightfully proud of. Don't do this to him. Think about that, Jacob. Think about what it'll do to him. Put it down. Put the gun down. they did was wrong, too. I, I could take it. I could take it all. But the boy couldn't. He, he didn't have enough strength. He saw the guard drinking the water from that cup while we were bone dry, burning up. And he asked for some. No, no, he, he begged for some. Just one cup out of the whole barrel. The man just laughed. <laughs> he laughed dumped what was left in the cup down in the dirt. Then, then he started away. And the boy broke for that barrel. He broke for that barrel like the man knew he would, like, like he tried to make us all do. The boy got hit. God, how he got hit. Again and again. And, and we all stood there, just like we had done so many times before. Until I broke, too. I, I don't know how many times I hit him or where I got the strength. I, but I thought, sure, he was dead. And I knew what would happen if, if I didn't run. I, I knew I'd never leave that place alive. That hell. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. That's all I need to hear now. You've impressed this court as deeply as you impressed those who testified on your behalf. And in the name of justice, justice in your case being almost two decades overdue, I am forwarding a transcript of this hearing along with the depositions of Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller, Mr. Todd. Also the consent and approval of the district attorney's office and my own personal feelings as to the nature and extent of your rehabilitation to the governor of the state of California. I will recommend that his office contact the proper authorities in the state of Alabama with a request that they waive extradition and drop all charges against you there. I'm confident, Mr. Barnes, you'll find the time has changed more men than you. And until we hear the results of that request, you are released forthwith on your own recognizance, and all bail is waived. Does that mean he's free? He will be. Congratulations. Congratulations. 